I would like to, to thank you again to be, to be present here in another uh, Open Air Open Access Week. We are in the first day of uh, the Open Air program for this week. Um, and I will start just with uh, some simple housekeeping rules. So this event, uh, it's being recorded and the, the recording will be made available in the event page. So in the future, you can revisit this session or share with other colleagues. And by default, your microphones are off, but during the, the discussion, we are free to open the microphone to put your questions. And you can also use the, the chat during the session to put your comments or questions. And um, at the end, during the Q&A session, we will answer you. You can also raise your hand uh, to, to ask to speak. The presentation as well the, the recording will be shared with you in the event page so you can revisit the contents and if you are using the social media to share this session you can use these hashtags we are referring at the bottom of the slide and also refer to open air so today we have Joanna Gripari from Athena Research Center and Leonida Pispiringas from open air that um, will present us today the Open Air Monitor Institutional Dashboard. It's one of the Open Air services um, that is targeting uh, institutions, organizations. And today, our colleagues will talk um, about this service and uh, explain all the functionalities. And we are free to ask questions to, to them in order to understand more and to know more about the service. Um, and I would like to give the floor to my colleagues. And Joanna, please, you can start. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome uh, from me as well. Leonidas and I will present the uh, monitoring dashboard today. It's one of the monitoring services of Open Air. Let me share my screen. Oops, here. Okay, can you see everything? Yes, it's perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, if you want to jump in with a question at some point, please do or use the chat. Okay, so um, let's uh, start from, uh, to make sure we have the same understanding. Uh, let's start about the importance of uh, monitoring, although of course you know this. Well, there is, a lot of money going into research activities. Well, not enough if you ask me, but it's still uh, it's still a lot. And uh, at the same time, the research uh, and innovation space has been changing a lot. Uh, so it has been growing in uh, speed, complexity, interconnectedness, and sheer size. Um, so that it has become something that is very data intensive and the ability to actually uh, get information out of that data in order to uh, make decisions that are effective, efficient, optimal altogether for your organization or an organization uh, has become a very difficult task. So what we would like to do, what would we like from a monitoring service is the ability to um, learn about how you are conducting business, let's say, and the effects that it has. So what are the resources that are getting in? What is this research output that is coming out? Um, are you following through with the open science uh, policies that you have in place? How, are, are, how is your network of collaborations growing? Are you becoming more visible over time? Where is this coming from in particular? And what is the impact on uh, different parts of the society? It is extremely important to be able to know about uh, these things, uh, to, to have data on these things in a structured way that so that information actually comes through uh, out of there. Um, this is the only way that one can, an uh, organization can really understand uh, the pathways uh, that are uh, affecting its uh, impact in the end and to gain insights on um, what are, for example, um, 
what should be the next investment in terms of general, in terms of resources, what are opportunities that this uh, that the organization has in order uh, to grow, what are the weak spots, what are the areas where you know we're kicking butt. This way, one is able to position themselves and make decisions, um, report to funders, for example, how well they're doing or what they need to change, and in general, be able to. Uh, deeply understand and make a story of how these research activities, um, you know, what is really going on there and what are, what are the future steps for them in order to, to align with, uh, with an organization uh, or organization's goals. Now, our approach uh, to these questions, which is uh, why uh, the real motivation of uh, building uh, this service is that we want to make it relevant for the community. You know, open air is you. So we want the indicators that are presented in the monitoring uh, dashboards uh, that we will show later to be co-developed uh, with the community that make sure that they're relevant, that they make sense to all, that we're all speaking the same language. And uh, it's all about, of course, uh, open science and open data because we want a product that is inclusive, transparent, so that any sort of assessment that comes out of it using it is uh, replicable. And uh, we base the monitor on the open air graph so that uh, we have a 360 view of research activities that, that goes beyond publication and also includes uh, research data, software, other research products, uh, but we have, we have projects, we have patterns, we have all sorts of things. And uh, the open air graph links, uh, uh, the because it's a graph database, it has the links between them so that an organization is able to track uh, what the connection are and eventually be able to talk about pathways. And something that we, I think everyone in this call at least cares about is that it's fully embedded in the EOS uh, ecosystem. Uh, from the content providers to the metrics that are uh, presented at the end. So that's how, uh, that's what our motivation of creating it the way we do. The principles that we followed are basically, um, of course you can see them here, but it's, it's basically a two prone approach. The first uh, prone is policy intelligence, which means, which uh, refers to uh, leveraging uh, big data with uh, AI and the connections that we have in the graph and a human in the loop and state of the art technology and, uh, to make sure that we provide someone that really goes beyond uh, what is a, a simple extraction uh, from data. So augment the intelligence that is available, uh, given all the tools that we have, these high tech tools that we have available right now, keeping the organization, the expert in the loop, and also making sure that all this intelligence has regular updates uh, so that timely decisions uh, can be made. Uh, the second prompt that is extremely important is that, um, we, are, we design something that is based on open and fair data and also uh, open and uh, transparent uh, and reproducible methodologies. Uh, this is key for the, both the assessment to be replicable, uh, but also in order to create these links within products, open and fair data is extremely important. And it also plays into the automation of all these procedures. Um, the open air graph, which is uh, you know, what we base everything on, uh, in case you haven't seen it, I'm going to briefly present it. So this is the graph uh, pipeline. It starts from the combination of a bunch of data sources that include um, different research products, uh, the metadata for those programs, relationships between them, and so on. Uh, all this goes through a deduplication process, so here in the middle, before step two, uh, where we make sure that records that are the same record, but we find it in two places, are merged into one, so that we don't have superfluous information. 
We do, however, always keep all the instances of the record so that we know that uh, um, how it looks like in each instance. And I mean, it's metadata. Uh, then we have uh, the, our infrastructure, our inference system uh, that extracts information and enriches this metadata with uh, additional things such as uh, uh, project links, uh, FOS, SDGs, and uh, FOS Food of Science, and other type of stuff. So that in the end, we come up with uh, passing the cleaning of all that the final cleaning we are able to conduct statistical analysis in order to present the indicators of monitor based on the needs of the community so that we make sure that we produce something relevant. Um, I do not really know what these numbers mean in detail, but just, I just wanted to mention that uh, the, it is the system infrastructure of the graph and uh, the monitor service that based on it is uh, it's set up, it's ready, it's working, and uh, there is a cluster dedicated just for these uh, tasks. Uh, so we, we find it to be reliable, which is of key importance for the methodological principles. So what do we create in a monitor? We create dashboards on demand uh, for, and I will explain what this is in a second, for institutions, funders, and research initiatives. Together with each type of dashboard, we allocate an open air expert uh, that is responsible for designing uh, and co-developing with you the dashboard and making sure that the data quality is on par and so on. So we, we've built the monitor to be a one-on-one -on -one service in the end to make sure that it really, it's, really, it's really used and satisfies the needs of uh, the organization. Uh, I will briefly mention the Open Science Observatory that is another monitoring service of open air uh, that is, uh, it's, for, for countries, it's country-based. And uh, you can go take a look at this address here in the bottom. Okay, what is the dashboard on demand? Starting from uh, the bottom here, we have the open air research graph, which is a, a common global asset. And part of which uh, is the data for an organization that is included in it. After everything passes through the pipeline and we have the graph, we have our open air experts in data science, statistics, and data mining that create a metrics and augment the data space so that we move on to the next step. Uh, indicators for different types of measures uh, can be created. Some examples here indicators for collaboration, for institutional openness, SDGs contribution, and so on and so forth. Now, the way the, these uh, indicators here and this profile that we build, we call this the default profile, are community-led. So we, are, uh, we have our experts that are able to create all sorts of metrics and conduct statistical analysis. And we, get, we have the directions from the community on what to actually do with the graph uh, in order to make sure that the profile stays relevant. So after this default profile is created for an institution, let's focus now on institutional profiles, uh, we, we build your profile, so an, organization, uh, an, an organization's profile, which means that we dedicate resources uh, on uh, just for this particular organization and uh, the expert that works closely to augment this default profile or change it in any way possible uh, so that it stays uh, useful and relevant for you. And also is takes into consideration the data that is shown and works on improving and so on. The last step here is the team sharing. The profile is built in a way that you can invite team members to view it and uh, make sure that they contribute and track the same, what they need to track and so on. And this is what's uh, a dashboard on demand. So um, I'm gonna talk about a few things, a few characteristics of the profiles now, of the institutional profile, um, but Leonidas will go in 
into details when he uh, when he does a demo. So there are several indicator themes that we are focusing now: uh, re funding, research output, uh, open science, collaborations, and impact. Uh, we plan to cover to have a good coverage for all of those by the first quarter of 2023. Uh, but there's already a lot of uh, indicators included, and uh, the rest of them are in beta for testing right now. Now, when we talk about uh, research output, we mean uh, the different types of research products and the fields of science that they cover, whether they are interdisciplinary or not, and so on. Uh, for open science, we have worked on indicators for, on uh, different fairness aspects of access right and open access routes, uh, the different general business uh, models, uh, article processing charters and uh, compliance to plan S type of indicators. And moving on to collaborations, we're, going, we're working on examining two different types of collaborations via project participations or via co-authorship or co-creation of data sets and so on. And in terms of impacts, we have the focus is along two lines right now, uh, the reach and frequency of research activities, so downloads and uh, citations, and uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, which sustainable development goal is my institution contributing to? And for funding, which is the first step actually, although I left it for the end by accident, it refers to the grants and uh, projects and different funders for an institution. These are the themes that have by, been prioritized uh, by the community for us right now. And any new indicators that will be developed or any shift in focus will come uh, from other community and from our users, uh, as we said before also. Now, in order to be able to make any sort of decision or extract information from all the themes, it is extremely important to have a granular view of what is going on. So we break down indicators uh, and present them in visualization by different fields of interest from the product types to domains, time, funders, data sources, and so on. This is really depending on uh, the needs of the institution. So uh, we have built a profile with things that we've been told are very relevant. But uh, given that an entity create is, uh, exists in the open air graph, uh, we can always produce uh, you know, a new indicator based on if, uh, this breakdown or whatever that someone, this metadata element, element that someone has in mind. Um, it is important to briefly mention here that we have, we have an internal tool that can uh, readily create these indicators, which has been uh, proven to be very useful in the past because it means that we can edit the dashboards quickly um, to make sure that they're more understandable and easy to use. Okay, some of the features that our dashboards include are that you will see also in a minute. The visualizations are interactive and they have exporting uh, capabilities so the data can be downloaded as well as the visualizations uh, to be used for analysis, for reporting, for whatever the needs are. There are filtering capabilities, and there's also the ability uh, to browse the data behind the indicators via links to Open Air Explore. So what is, when you say that publications are increasing over time, what are these publications that you are included? Is, uh, is something missing? This is of extreme importance to us because um, this way we can work together with the users to um, examine the data quality of what we're showing and make sure that um, it is representative of uh, the activities of the organization. And there's some editing of the visualizations as well. Now we have built the, the privacy settings of the profile in a way that it can be used uh, for three different types of uh, um, uh, needs. 
So we have uh, each indicator that populates in the, the profile can be set up as public. So the combination of public indicators, this public dashboard can be used for showcasing. So for example, an institution could invite a funder to examine how they are performing. The indicators can also be set as restricted and uh, this can be used for team members of the organization. So only someone invited by the institution can view these indicators. And then uh, the, to view the restricted dashboard, let's say. And then there are indicators set as private that, are, that is for work in progress and only the manager of the profile can see and ask. All of this, uh, all, all of this comes with the, with the, a very important asset for us, which is the ability to customize and validate in our one-on-one -on -one sessions. So we have one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh, our institutions. Of course, um, depending on the frequency, depends on their needs and availability as well where we start by presenting the dashboard features, the editing and user management, and you know, we give them a tour of the service and everything they need to know. And then we work closely with them um, to get feedback on the indicators and potentially develop new one. And also uh, work on the data quality and uh, the validation in general, in the end of the profile. So are all the important data sources included? Um, has the duplication uh, worked well? Are there any numbers? You know, the, having a monitoring dashboard and uh, viewing things in aggregate allows often for someone to spot a mistake easily. You know, why is there a huge jump in 2008? Doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and then this allows us to zoom closer to the data and either explain what is going on and add it as a comment to the visualization or improve the data quality if there's a mistake. Okay, um, so this was briefly on uh, how we set up the monitor dashboard and why we set it this way. And now I'm gonna pass the floor to uh, Leonidas. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna, for uh, the presentation and uh, thank you all for uh, joining uh, on this session of uh, presenting the Open Air Monitor service. Uh, so now we will proceed uh, with the demonstration of the service. We will focus on uh, three things, basically, on the user registration and management. We will uh, see the process of uh, how a user can contact us and uh, become a dashboard manager and have a dashboard for her institution. And then we will see the functionalities of the backend administrator interface and how to set up shop, how to set up your dashboard. And we will see the front end of the dashboard with indicator themes, how the users will see uh, your institution's dashboard We'll briefly see the documentation of the indicators and of the service and the visualizations. And at the end, we will have a three. We'll see, I will present the three slides on the two essential steps that uh, you should take in order to have a data quality and validation of uh, your dashboard. So uh, let's start for uh, at the home page of the monitor service. Let's say that uh, you are affiliated with an institution and you want uh, to have a dashboard. What do you do? Well, it's pretty easy. You get in contact with us and uh, the easiest way is to press the get started button at the homepage of the monitor service, where you will be, redirect you will be redir redirected in a form where you will fill your information regarding your name, email, institutional email, your job title and the organization, the institution that you are affiliated with. After we receive uh, this contact form, uh, we will get back to you in the 24 to 48 hours, informing you that we have received uh, 
your request and uh, we will start the process of allocating the data for your institution from the open research graph and uh, create uh, and uh, create uh, the virtual machine the dedicated server that uh, will be that will serve for your institution dashboard at uh, the open air infrastructure hardware infrastructure so when the, your institutional dashboard is ready we will get in contact with you and uh, you will receive an email from the service in order to register yourself as a dashboard manager the email you will receive we look something like will be like this one will uh, here for the purpose of the demo we have uh, the open air university we present you the dashboard of the open air university as you can see in the email we have the url that we will click and use the corresponding verification code in order to accept the invitation and of course, uh, you can uh, see that uh, by logging in and using the service, you accept and agree to Open Air's personal data protection policy. So, after clicking the URL, we are redirected to the monitor service where we sign in with our institutional email, the email we used in order to you used in order to contact us to create your dashboard. So after signing in, the service, the platform requests for the verification code from the email. And after entering the verification code, you accept the invitation and you are registered as a dashboard manager of the Open Edge University's institutional dashboard. Uh, the first screen you see is the administrator dashboard where you can manage your profile. We have three specific tabs here, the general tab, the indicators tab, and the users tab. Let's start with the general tab where you have to, where you have here general information regarding uh, your institution, uh, where you can change to see if it's a, it's a correct information and maybe you can change the name or you can add a, a description or a, a link to the logo of your institution. Also here you can select the status. You can change the status of your profile of your institutional dashboard uh, to the, the options of being public, restricted and private as Joanna said in her presentation. I will get back to this later on while uh, describing the indicators tab. Now let's see, let's go to the users tab where we have uh, two types of users, the managers and the members. The managers are the users that uh, have access to the administration dashboard and, uh, the, indic and the indicators uh, and where they can edit the profile, the indicators of the dashboard for the members or any public user without an account to see to the dashboard profile. The members are uh, registered users that have been invited by the dashboard man managers and they only have access to the profile, the restricted profile or the public dashboard profile and they do not have access to the administration interface. So let's go to the administration interface of the indicators. This is the administration interface and the dashboard profile as it is shown to all the entitled users according to the status is here by pressing the dashboard at the top menu. And by pressing manage, we return to the administration dashboard. Okay, here, uh, let me see the, show you a few functionalities that you can change in the indicators, in the numbers and the graph that we present. And then I will go to the public dashboard profile in order to see, to see a definition, a description of a few of the indicators that we provide. 
So first of all, let's see the status of the topics and the profile as uh, it has been, uh, as I told you earlier in the general tab. We have uh, three statuses. It is the public status, the restricted and the private status. The public status, when uh, a profile, a topic or a graph, if it is set to public, everyone will be able to access it and view it and see it through the monitor platform without signing in. If uh, respectively, if it is restricted, only the registered users as managers or members of the institution will be able to view the course, the respective topics or, the, or indicators. And if it's private, no one will be able to see the topic or the indicator or the profile apart from the dashboard managers through the administrator interface. These statuses go from the top level of the institution profile until to the bottom level of uh, a graph or a number. A graph or a number. So let's go to the dashboard interface in order to see a description of the topics and to see any an indicative metrics and describe an indicative metrics of the topics. Uh, as you have already seen in the presentation of Ioana, we have the topics at the left side of the bar, we have the, the topics, the, the basic categories of the indicators. The first one is an overview category where we have a few uh, indicators and metrics uh, for uh, the user to get an idea of the institutional profile and the institutional dashboard. And uh, all the other categories uh, are going into more detailed information. Well, let's start with the overview section where we have in numbers the production, the research outcomes of the institutions, the publication of the data sets, data sets, software, and other research products. And we also have graphs. For example, we have a publication trends over time where we have a comparison of all publications, which all publications which are represented with columns with the peer-reviewed publications and the grants supported. And of course, as uh, we can, for example, at this graph, we can deselect the peer-reviewed publication and see only the comparison of all publications to the grant supported ones. And by going inside in the lines of the column, you can see the values of the publications. Respectively, we have data sets over time, and we have a few indicators on the openness. For example, the publication openness over time, where we see all publications compared to the open access and the gold open access ones, respectively. Following up to the more detailed topics, the funding topics contain indicators regarding the project's participations and the funders that the, the institution has. In the overview tab, we have a few graphs on the project participations and the project participations, the European Commission project participation by framework programs. And we also have, we also have uh, the topic of the Horizon 2020. Well, we have the participation and funding information to the indicators of the profile. I'm uh, giving a short, brief description of uh, the tabs, the topics, and the indicators uh, because uh, we uh, we don't have uh, much time in order to go one one by indicator. But we can do this uh, after afterwards if you want to have a dashboard in a one to one consultation. Following up on the research output topic. We have the publications, data set software, and other research products. Uh, we'll go through the publications subtopic as indicative for 
our demo, where we present the uh, indicators on all publications and the peer reviewed publications. We have, apart from the total number, we have uh, breaking down the publications by type, the publication trends over time, the publications by type and over time, and a few more graphs regarding the top data, source, data sources by the number of the publications they provide for this institution and the most productive projects. And respectively for the peer reviewed publications, we're breaking down by type, the peer reviewed publications over time. And also of course here we have the top 15 publishers where we can see by number of the peer reviewed publications. Respectively, we have uh, indicators for data set software and other research products. At the open science topic, we have the breaking down on public uh, publications, data sets and software. On the publications tab, we have the open access category, the general business model and processing charges and the fairness. On the open access category, we can see the publications by access rights over time. By access rights, we have the open access publications, the embargoed, restricted, closed access, and the ones that we don't have any information, that we have them as not av available. Here, for example, we can see that the open access uh, dominates as, a, as an access right for this institution. And uh, if we deselect the open access, we can also see more clearly the numbers and we can have comparisons respectively uh, on any category that we select. We also have the publications by access rights and by funder. And here, as you can see, because the biggest funders with the most number of publications uh, have a different, a huge uh, difference uh, through most of the other funders. In order to see the information for the other funders, we can zoom in at the graph, respectively, and see the information for the rest of the funders. And of course, we can also select and deselect the access rights. Respectively, we have indicators where on the open access routes of the publications where we present the green, gold, and high publications by the green, gold, hybrid, and bronze routes. And we have the top 15 fund funders accordingly. Let's go to the tab to the general business model and processing charges tab. But here we can see the open access publication trends by general business model with the four general business models with, uh, which are full open access with APCs, the diamond business model, transformative journal, and the hybrid. Here, let me interrupt my presentation in order to tell you that uh, everything that I am telling you now is uh, documented and we will see the documentation part after I finish uh, the demonstration of the indicators. And we have the fairness tab. Where we have several graphs displaying the publications by attributes that uh, provide the fairness, that promotes the fairness of the research outcomes, such as the publications, a comparison with the publications that have a persistent identifier over time. You have, we have compare the all publications and the ones that have a persistent identifier, for example, 
in this uh, for this institution for the open air university most of the publications have an open a persistent identifier okay sometimes we are having issues on loading the graphs let me move on to the collaboration tab topic where we present the co-funded research outputs by type and we have a trends of co-funded publications over time so this is uh, the, the institutional uh, brief description of the institutional dashboard let me go to the administrator interface of the indicators in order to show you that you have uh, on the graph you have partially editing apart from changing the status you have partially editing rights and you can also export the graph in as an image or as a pdf document or as an svg vector image and also you can download as a CSV or an Excel file, the data table, the data that is used in order to produce the chart. So let me go to the resources menu where we have the detailed document documentation of the service and the indicators. First of all, let's go to the methodology where we have the terminology and construction. Where here we describe all the entities and the attributes that either are here we inherit or infer via entries from the harvested records at the open research graph or the constructed attributes that we construct according to the methodology that we describe. For example, we have the general business models where we fully document what is a fully open access journal, uh, fully open access journal business model, a subscription journal, a hybrid or a transformative one. And uh, in uh, most of these uh, cases on general business models and APC business models, we follow the unpaywalls approach. And one last thing regarding the da dashboard, dashboard on the browser uh, and uh, on the browser uh, on the browse data data you can see at the discovery portal of open air at open air explore all the research products that are used in order to produce the indicators at the monitor service in detail you can browse search enter filters at the open air explore service and finally, excuse me, I forgot to mention at the resources tab menu, at the indicator sub menu, we provide lists of, of where we document each indicator, each metric that we have in the institutional dashboard. And we also have a few extra metrics here that I didn't show you at the dashboard that are soon to be incorporated in the in, your, in the institution's dashboard profile. All the indicators that are soon to be incorporated are remarked with the coming soon or coming soon and beta comment in the table. So this is pretty much a brief demonstration of the service. Let me go back to the presentation in order to finish up by telling you the two important steps, essential, important and essential steps for us uh, in order to have data quality and validation of the institutional profile, which is the first of it is uh, the, the duplication of uh, the organizations of your institution and the identification of parent-child relationships, departments, schools, and others. What do we mean by saying the duplication? Uh, 
we gather, uh, as you already might have known, we gather, gather data from multiple, several data sources around the world globally to the open air research graph. And the institution is this uh, it is, is displayed uh, in uh, many of these data sources with a different name or in a different way. So we have the open orgs platform where we provide you access and as you are entitled for your institution, you, you can perform the deduplication. You can see all these different names that have been presented in the and collected by OpenAir in the several data sources. And you can select them. If they are indeed your institution, you can select them in order to have them as an one entity and provide you with better results. And of course, another important thing is that you inform us for all of the data sources you have at your institution regarding any repository you have or any open access journals or even CRIS systems at your institution. And it is very important to register and validate your data sources in the Open Air Provide service by following the Open Air guidelines so that they are incorporated in the Open Air Research Graph. And, we'll, this, and this way will uh, provide you at the monitor service even better results with quality and the profile will be validated. And of course, by having uh, your data sources registered at the Open Air Provide Service, one of the most important things is that uh, automatically all your data sources will be registered at the uh, European Open Science Cloud infrastructure without the need to do anything by, uh, from your side. So here I have a, a screenshot of the OpenOrgs platform, where we can see, for example, the University of Minho, where first of all, we have a few information regarding the university and a few identifiers that have been collected. And at the duplicate sections below, we have the several duplicates that have been found in the all the data sources that OpenAir collects data from. And at the right side, you can select if which which uh, duplicate or not is to be incorporated and treated as one organization. And following up on the benefits of registering your data sources at the Open I Provide dashboard, as I have already said, you will be fully embedded in the EOSC infrastructure. We will have accurate and qualitative metrics. You will have visible and richer content because at open air in the provide service, we enrich your data and we give them back to you enriched. Of course, we have the linked science as you already taught in the presentation where we have links from and to the research products. And of course your collection will be up to date with alerts enrichments and additions. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. Okay, many thanks, Leonidas and the, um, Joanna, for, for your presentation. Um, so we have some time for questions, so please feel free to open your microphone if you, if you prefer, or write your question in the chat. We, we already have some comments and, and uh, questions in the chat, but uh, our, our open air colleagues are already answering the questions that are that were related with the access with the access for example but, um, if you have some questions about the, the institutional dashboard or the monitor service in general please have this opportunity as we have here our specialists uh, and service managers here today you can put your questions Like some time, so we can take this opportunity. I would ask also 
like to to request to the participants to to answer our uh, questionnaire that my colleague Paula uh, posted in the chat is a, a questionnaire to to give us uh, an evaluation of this session in order for us to, to collect some valuable information from from you in order to improve the upcoming sessions. If you have some doubts, for example, on how to, to request access to have a dashboard, Leonidas already explained it very well, but, but if, if, you, if you are interested to request a dashboard, please, uh, you, you can do it and you can, you can start, for, for example, asking for some other information. Maybe one thing to say is that uh, um, since we have uh, changed the dashboards a lot, we are planning uh, workshops to uh, validate uh, indicators and get some feedback on them. Um, so this involves a lot of people to give um, uh, organized in a way so they can give feedback on both indicators and the functionalities. Uh, so if someone is interested in participating, perhaps they can shoot us an email. Thank you. Yes, and you, you can use the contact form in the monitor page, or you can use also, let me write here in the chat, the, our email, not desk email. Of open air. Sending a, a message to this email address. Uh, it will create a ticket in our open air ticket system and your request will be directed to the proper uh, opener colleague. Okay, as we don't have any question, I think we can close this session.